February 4th, Saturday of the fourth week in Ordinary Time. There's a lot of talk today about burnout and self-care, especially for people in the helping professions. I know many people in healthcare, education, and social work who are exhausted. For example, teachers in our schools were worn down with all the adjustments they had to make in their teaching and advising during the COVID crisis, while they were also dealing with serious family issues with both children who were out of school or daycare and elders who were especially vulnerable to the illness and needed extra attention and care. Even now that the crisis appears to have subsided, with their work ostensibly returning to a more normal schedule, they are still dealing with learning deficits caused by two years of disruptions of student schooling and a serious spike in student mental health issues that began before COVID, but was certainly aggravated by the pandemic. On top of that, our vexing problems about how to address sensitive social and ethical issues in the classroom and conflicting pressures from parents, politicians, and other interest groups about what one can say and cannot say or cannot do. Many teachers who care deeply about their students and believe in the power of education to transform lives are now being beaten down and wonder how long they can sustain the commitment and whether it even is worth it anymore. An alarming number have walked away from the profession, creating even more pressure on those who stay. There are similar patterns in other helping professions, including nursing, social work, daycare, even ministry. I know many priests who are discouraged by the demands of covering one and sometimes multiple parishes all by themselves, trying to navigate the conflicting demands of various factions and still maintaining a healthy pastoral presence all while facing skepticism and hostility caused by the conflicts and scandals in the church. Good people who got into their line of work out of a genuine desire to care for others are being crushed by the increased demands caused by various crises and the inadequate personal and institutional resources available to deal with them. To maintain their energy and commitment, people in these professions need to pay attention to their own physical and psychological needs. No matter how generous they are, if they are so depleted by the demands of their work, they will have nothing left to give. In today's gospel, Jesus sees that in his disciples, which is why he takes them away for a little time by themselves after their intense apostolic work. Jesus himself would often go off by himself to pray after ministering to the crowds. Yet when the crowd tracked them down and pressed in again, Jesus, quote, moved with pity, responded to their needs and began to teach them. This incident highlights the tension we all face between being available to others who require help and attending to our own needs. Jesus was able to respond so generously to the constant demands of the crowds because he was so deeply rooted in the love of the Father and the mission he had been given to proclaim the kingdom of God. That was what he lived for, so he drew strength from being able to satisfy people's longing for God's healing and mercy. Remember that after his encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well in John 4, when his disciples pressed him to eat something, he told them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. We still have to eat and sleep but if we are properly centered in God and God's call, 
we can find the freedom and the psychic energy we need to keep giving, even when the pressure is great. It is not so much a matter of time as it is of attentiveness to God's word and a habit of mind that keeps God always at the center of our consciousness. Most of all, it requires trust. When I was a newly ordained priest, I lived and worked in a parish in a poor working class neighborhood. One night when I was on call, I was awakened by a phone call at 3 a.m. It was a man I did not know who said, I'm standing outside the church in the snow with a knife. And if I can't find someone to talk to, I'm going to kill myself. Groggy and resentful at having been roused out of bed in the middle of the night, I wondered if I should take the chance of letting a stranger come into the rectory, especially one with a knife. But I sensed the pain and desperation in his voice rather than menace, so I invited him in. We spoke for an hour or so, mainly about his family issues. I tried to get him to go to the hospital, but he refused, saying he felt he could handle it now, so I gave him a blessing and sent him on his way. The next afternoon, when I came back from a call, there was a note from the man assuring me that he was all right now, but if I had not spoken to him, he really would have done something drastic. Then I knew I had made the right decision. Sometimes you have to trust God and take the risk.